Good morning to you all. Uh, we move to the unit number one in the design of machine members one. Design for static strength. The subject machine design is the creation of new and better machines and improving the existing ones. This is done in order to achieve a more economical uh, stature that is uh, in the way of uh, producing the things or by the way of operating the things so it is to achieve uh, the better economical status uh, that may be done by reducing the cost of production or by reducing the operational cost of the equipment for the uh, efficient way of uh, doing the design of a machine or machine element one requires a sound knowledge in mathematics engineering mechanics strength of materials theory of machines and various types of uh, production technology uh, like uh, different process welding forging uh, casting etc and also one must have uh, a good awareness and also the ability to understand things or to represent things in the engineering drawing. Here you can see a classic example of how things have changed. Even though in the four photographs, the same thing has shown that is a scooter or a scooty. Uh, what has changed? There are two wheels and one handle and uh, it's capable of carrying two persons. But its fuel efficiency, its uh, look and its ergonomics, that is uh, the styling or uh, the comfort, these things have changed from 1992-2020. The classification of design uh, is generally three types. First one is adaptive and second one is a development and third one is a new or creative design. In the first one, uh, it's an adaptation of the existing design. A design is there somewhere and uh, we are going to use it in some other place uh, to cater to the someone else needs. So here, uh, a designer is doing only a few modifications or minor alterations of the existing product. In the development design, uh, there are uh, several uh, changes. Uh, the changes might be in the material or they might be in the method of manufacture. And then third one is uh, new design or creative design. That means uh, the things uh, which uh, didn't exist, uh, they are to be created for the comfort of uh, people or for the benefit of the people. Uh, it's a kind of creation. The other classifications are rational design, empirical design, industrial design, optimum design, system design, element design, computer aided design. So here these are uh, different uh, other classifications. Uh, so the rationality of the design is based on the mathematical formula, uh, engineering uh, mechanics. Uh, empirical design, this is based on the experience and expertise of an individual industrial design it depends on the ease of manufacturing so with the available machinery uh, how best you can manufacture that's called uh, the industrial design and optimum design with the given set of conditions and constraints uh, how uh, economically you can uh, design that uh, the number of operations or number of machines and uh, number of materials etc next uh, optimum design Then system design, it's a, a design of complex mechanical system. Uh, it may be, uh, for example, a motor car or it may be uh, a lathe machine, etc. The element design, uh, different uh, machines may have more than one element. Uh, element is a part of uh, a machine or a mechanical system. So you can take the example of a piston uh, or crankshaft, etc. Then the computer-aided design, 
uh, this design uh, depends upon the computer system to assist the creation instead of doing things uh, manually drawing and uh, calculation etc so we will use the computer uh, packages like autocad nx uh, katia etc for the uh, creation modification analysis and optimization of the design the general procedure in machine design first of all we are going to identify the need or aim this is a statement of problem or aim uh, which machine or which mechanical system has to be designed and in the second step uh, the synthesis select the possible mechanism or uh, combinations of mechanisms uh, to get the desired motion and then next step is analysis of forces we will uh, determine the forces on each of the members of the machine uh, based upon the energy transmission by the member uh, that's what the analysis of the forces and then next step is material selection so each part may be subjected to different types of forces uh, and uh, we require uh, strength of the members uh, in uh, a longitudinal or in the lateral directions depending upon that uh, and also depending upon the where characteristics uh, desirable we are going to uh, determine the selection of the uh, members so after the selection of the material for a particular part uh, then we go for the uh, design of individual elements of this machine so each member may be subjected to uh, some kind of force or uh, forces so depending upon the force or forces the member is subjected to some amount of stress and it may be in the uniaxial direction or biaxial direction or it's a complex stress condition so depending upon that uh, we are going to find out uh, the maximum value of stress uh, experienced by the member and for the material considered there might be a failure value and uh, depending upon the failure value and uh, the kind of member we will uh, assume a suitable factor of safety and with that uh, we will find out uh, the permissible or allowable stress for the member made of certain material and we will compare the stresses induced in the member due to the forces applied and also the permissible stress for the member made of a certain material so by comparing these uh, we will uh, finally determine the dimensions of the member this is called uh, uh, design of uh, elements step number five and then we move on to the next step modification so uh, based upon our past experience and also based upon the uh, the facilities we have at the manufacturing uh, location we need to uh, modify some of these things so that modification uh, either for the alignment or for the assembly or for the manufacture uh, we are going to modify certain things so this is a modification procedure and then finally we will come to a, a conclusion that uh, okay these are the parts and this is the mechanism and uh, it is going to uh, give the desired motion and also to serve the purpose uh, either it is to convert one form of uh, energy to another or one form of energy to work or vice versa and then we will uh, uh, finally draw the different components uh, in detail uh, that's called a detailed drawing so these uh, detailed drawing of different parts are sent uh, with the type of production process and also with the various uh, uh, what you call uh, you know the limits fits and tolerances uh, so with these details uh, the detailed drawing is sent to the production shop in the production shop 
according to the drawing the details mentioned in the drawing uh, the things are manufactured in the workshop or the production facility various general considerations in the machine design the first and foremost thing is uh, the load or types of loads and uh, the resulting stresses this is the most important of uh, the design of a machine component so if you take uh, a member subjected to agile loading maybe tension or compression so it is subjected to agile load and uh, the failure mode uh, if the member is generally uh, a ductile material it will have uh, first of all the elastic uh, deformation and uh, then it may move uh, to the plastic state so within the elastic uh, limit uh, if the member is going to deform then it's okay but if it is a uh, Uh, deforming uh, very much uh, uh, in the elastic region or if it moves to the next level the plastic region then we need to consider it as a failure next uh, the other considerations are uh, motion of parts uh, that is a uh, kinematics of the machine so there might be different kinds of uh, motions uh, which are uh, needed in certain mechanisms uh, the rectilinear motion the curvilinear motion or motion with constant velocity uh, the acceleration either it is constant or variable and then selection of uh, materials form and size of the parts frictional resistance uh, it is uh, very much essential uh, in order to reduce the friction between the parts and also uh, the time to change them uh, after wearing out uh, and then convenient and uh, economic features so, so certain things are uh, uh, desirable for the smooth operation or for the comfort of uh, the operator or the uh, persons using it then uh, use of standard parts this helps uh, in replacing certain parts uh, with the things that are available locally anywhere in the world and then safety of operation after all whatever is the machine used it must be used to the safety of the operators or safety of persons around that's very important and then the workshop the production shop facilities then the number of machines needed to be manufactured or the number of machines needed to produce a part so this is also a very much important consideration and then the cost of construction So the manufacturing of a part uh, by uh, a set of methods uh, is uh, very costlier than uh, the manufacturing of the same part using the other set of methods uh, so this is also to be considered uh, uh, an engineer must keep the cost uh, at the lowest and the strength uh, at the highest and finally the assembling after uh, the production of various parts uh, we need to assemble them to make it a a meaningful machine or mechanism the factors uh, that are related to the customer requirement a, a customer after all he wants uh, uh, the product uh, uh, with good strength and uh, good uh, lifetime uh, durability and uh, less cost so the certain things are uh, mentioned here the material cost production cost environmental factors ease of maintenance economy of uh, energy consumption handling shipping transportation size weight form appearance aesthetics quantity and delivery schedule spare part availability these are the various factors related to the customers requirement and the other factors are these are related to the manufacturing facility loading and stress limits working principle design strength wear resistance and corrosion resistance material selection manufacturing method limits fits and tolerances quality uh, of surface finish a protective coating requirement jigs fixtures tools etc gauges inspection method types of scrap generated in the manufacturing and and utilization of the scrap 
interchangeability. These are the various factors associated with uh, the manufacturing. Preferred numbers uh, are preferred series. There is a need to keep uh, standard size or dimensions on any component in discrete steps. When a machine is to be made in several sizes with different powers or capacities, it is necessary to decide what capacities to cover the certain range efficiently with minimum number of sizes. Generally, uh, it is followed a geometrical progression with constant ratio. The preferred numbers are conveniently rounded off values derived from a geometric series having the integral powers of uh, 10, 5 root 10, 10 root 10, 20 root 10, 40 root 10 like that. The series of preferred numbers are designated as R5. The 5 root 10 is designated as R5. Then 10 root 10 is R10. Then 20 root 10 is R20. Then 40 root 10 is R, uh, R40 and so on. So these uh, series R5, R10, 20, R40 and R80 are called basic series. So from these basic series, uh, the other series are, uh, are derived, they are called uh, derived series. Uh, for example, if you take uh, R5 series, uh, in the R5 series, uh, it is 5 root 10. We start with uh, 5 root 10 it comes uh, around 1.5848. So rounded off to 1.6. Then square of that, R square, that is 1.5848 square. It comes around, uh, rounded off to 2.5. Then R cube, so that is uh, 1.5848 to the power of 3. It is rounded off to 4. And then R power 4, rounded off to 6.3. R power 5, rounded off to 10. So this 1.6, 2.5, 4.0, 6.3 and 10 are the derived series of R5. Application. Standard shaft diameter, power rating of the coupling, center distance of the gearbox, etc. So the R5 series, the preferred numbers, just as we discussed, uh, starting from uh, 1 and then 1.6 and then 2.5, 4, 6.3 and 10. Similarly, in the R10 series, we'll have 1, uh, then 1.25, 1.6, 2, 2.5, so on, so forth. Now, let us move to the stress. When uh, a body is subjected to a force or a system of forces, uh, the body, is, the force or forces are trying to deform the body. Body by nature is going to resist that uh, deformation. This uh, Internal resistance to the external applied forces uh, to deform the body is known as the stress. Stress mathematically is calculated by the force applied upon the cross-sectional area because these stresses are uh, the simple stresses. Uh, it might be a, a tensile stress or a compressive stress mm -hmm. or a shear stress. Then strain, uh, it is the ratio of uh, the change in dimension to the original dimension. When uh, a body is subjected to an axial stress like a tensile stress, so due to which uh, the member may yield uh, in length. The change in length uh, when compared to the original length is called longitudinal strain or it may be calculated in other dimensions also. Sir, Sir.
so here then they'll stress storm a body is subjected to an axial force and that force uh, at this section is resulted in a uh, force applied in uh, this is reactive force at this section and this is the applied force and this reactive force uh, is uniform along the cross section and this uh, force it is uh, uniformly shared on the cross section force upon the area is the stress the stress is assumed to be uniformly distributed over the entire area this is called tendile stress then compressive stress this is the other way the body is subjected to axial force but it is pushing at the body and uh, at the section xx uh, if you have taken the force is inducing uh, the reactive state of uh, force in the opposite direction and uh, that resulted in the uniform uh, uh, force applied upon the total area that force upon the area that is stress uh, is uniformly uh, distributed over the entire area at the section so this is called uh, the compressive Uh, stress and this compressive stress uh, uh, will uh, reduce the length of the body whereas tensile stress uh, its intention is to increase the length of the body uh, in the engineering uh, components uh, we will consider only the elastic uh, deformation and uh, if the member goes into the state of plastic deformation we will consider it as a failure hooke's law states that uh, the stress is proportional to strain within the elastic limit or uh, stress by strain is equal to a constant called the ens modulus or it is also known as modulus of elasticity the units are uh, either in newton per mm square or it is also used in higher units uh, giga pascals gpa next uh, shear stress and strain when the body is subjected to two equal and opposite forces acting tangentially across a resisting section uh, here you can see there are uh, two plates uh, one is uh, shown in the pink color and another is in the blue color these two are connected with the help of a riveter and uh, the pink one is pulled to the left and uh, the blue one is pulled to the right and at the junction of these two the portion on the upper region is pulled towards left and at the junction the portion on the lower region is pulled to the right they are having same amount of magnitude but they are having the opposite directional forces the upper region is pulled to the left and lower region pull to the right that will result in uh, a force on the cross section at the junction so that will result in the disposition or uh, displacement of the regions uh, in the respective direction the upper region you can see has displaced to the left and lower region displaced to the right uh, that's a separation exactly taking place at the junction so this area is called the resisting area the resisting area to the applied amount of force p so p upon the resisting area gives the simple shear stress so the load is applied along the the cross section where it is exactly being separated so the direction of force is uh, parallel to or along a surface and that surface being the resting area so that uh, resulting stress is known as shear stress it is also known as simple shear the shear stress uh, mathematically is the tangential force upon the resisting area here the force is p and area cross section area uh, the rivet being uh, uh, circular in cross section So pi by 4 d square. So p upon pi by 4 d square is the shear stress in the shown riveting system. So here you can see uh, there are uh, 
two rivets connecting two plates the blue one on the left hand side and pink one on the right hand side which are subjected to equal amount of forces these are the two plates to be connected and these are uh, connected in a different way so here in this diagram uh, you can see uh, two plates uh, in a bud joint uh, that are placed with two cover plates the two plates are uh, joined with uh, two rivets in the double cover bud joint and when they are when they are uh, being pulled away by applying a tensile force you can see uh, the displacement of uh, the left side one to the left and right side one to the right and uh, you can see each rivet is being separated at uh, two places that means there are two resisting areas along the applied forces direction so this is called double shear the separation of the rivet is being uh, happened at two places so when it is happened at single place that is called single shear now it is happening at two places so this is called double shear so the shear stress in this case is applied load upon the area in the double shear that two times the pi by 4 d square where d is the diameter of the rivet and then the shear strain the relationship between stress and uh, strain these are proportional to each other and the shear stress by shear strain is equal to a constant that constant is the modulus of rigidity or uh, the shear modulus this is designated by the nrg next uh, the other stresses are the bearing stress here you can see the two plates uh, are being connected with a single rivet uh, in the lap joint uh, when uh, the two plates are being pulled away uh, if the shearing of the rivet is not happening uh, the one more thing could happen that is uh, at the uh, rivet hole in the plate the rivet shank uh, is being pressed this could happen to either of these so either rivet shank being pressed or the rivet hole being pressed the harder one is going to press the relatively softer one which will result in uh, some gap between the plate and the rivet shank uh, which may ultimately leads to some leakage this type of uh, uh, stress uh, is known as the crushing or bearing stress so this can be applied with a, a different example here you can see a journal bearing uh, so here the journal which is uh, rotated in the bearing is having a certain amount of weight uh, it may be due to its self weight or uh, gear wheels or fly wheels uh, which are mounted on it and uh, due to which uh, it will be having some certain amount of uh, weight uh, or it is treated as a force and this force is uh, resisted uh, by the projected area so this is acting in the vertically downward direction and uh, there is a length of L uh, 